Somebody said, this is a day that the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and be glad in it. And it's, again, glory to God, giving me great pleasure to introduce our minister for the hour, praise God, our missionary, praise God, our missionary man of the hour. God has blessed us to be a part of such a, such a wonderful mission. And we're going to ask, praise God, at this time, if Pastor Toby, Joseph Toby, come up and let us receive him with a hearty amen. Amen and amen. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done and greater things he will do. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you, O oh God, for giving us another opportunity to be alive. Not just to be alive, but to be strong and to be able to move around and be able to gather in your presence. We give you all glory, honor, and adoration. In the name of Jesus, we have come, we danced, we did, we did all that we could do. Now it is time for you to speak to us, your word. The one that gives us life, oh God. Father, I pray that as I decrease, that you increase. And let your word come forth, oh God, as it cometh from you and not from a man. I pray for listening years that those that are here will pay attention to your word and that they will be doers, and then you will bless them. We thank you. We give you glory now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can have your wonderful seats. Amen. In our little Bible school that we went down there in Africa, we received some training. They said, whenever you are called to preach, you need to walk with a sermonic mind. That means you have to walk with your sermon in your mind all the time in order to be finding some illustrations and all kind of stuff to add to it. But uh, I sometimes don't only walk with sermonic mind. That is my sermon in mind. But most of the time, I walk with my mind on sermon. <laughs> that is, there are some instances that come your way that even though you are not preaching, but then it gives you a word to preach. And so sometimes I walk with my mind on sermon. And so this week something happened uh, that uh, uh, it gave me a word that I think we can share or benefit. Uh, I, I went to our office and then they, they, they were looking for somebody in the office. And so uh, uh, the director asked me if I get anybody to make a uh, recommendation or, uh, to bring. And so I thought of somebody. I called the person, and the person said the schedule is not good for, for her. And then I began to run and you know, my mind through some people that I think I, I can you know, bring because it's an opportunity when they ask you to recommend somebody. And, and so my mind ran on my brother's uh, stepdaughter. Uh, uh, Bishop knows him, maybe one of you, uh, two of you may be aware of him, John. He has a stepdaughter there that just graduated not too long ago. And so my mind uh, ran on her. And so I call John and I say, um, my office is seeking somebody and I, I thought of your daughter. Can, can we, I know, give her a try? And he said, okay, that's good. And so she call, uh, he called the house to see whether she's home and then um, I went and picked her up, carried her to the office because they wanted to really see her, to talk to her before even doing any paperwork. So I took her there, and then when we went there, they, 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 they began to ask her a few questions. And then the guy asked me, he said, how well do you trust her? Amen. So I said, uh, maybe... 80 to 90 percent. <laughs> Amen. And he said, why? I said, because she's a human being. And uh, the one that I may know, maybe that's all I know. And so there are certain things that may come up that I don't know about. But for now, I know she's good. And I know she can do the work. And so he laughed and said, that's good. So I left the office. Then my mind ran on the recommendations that I was making. 
how they are asking me how well I can you know, vouch for her. And then I thought of something came to my mind. He said, but who can you trust 100%? <laughs> And when that, that voice came to me, then I never hesitated to answer the question. I said, there's only one man that I can trust 100%. And then, then the voice kept asking me, so can you recommend him to someone who needs him? I said, yes, of course. I can do that. I can recommend this guy to somebody who needs him. Then he said, but people need him. And I said, okay. Then he said, but you are speaking to the people who need him. And I began to think, what are you talking about? Then before my mind went on something on the sermon, beforehand I have already got some points and stuff on, so on to uh, share on. So when my mind ran on this point, I decided to speak today to all of us on a simple team and topic, my recommendation. My recommendation. And so I'm going to just do a recommendation letter to you and to everyone, introducing to you a man that I have known over the years. A man that I trust 100%. And so my letter goes this way. To whom it may concern. I don't know whether it may concern you. I don't know you are the one that is in need of this person. But to whom it may concern. I write to recommend to you a man who is capable of doing the job perfectly without blemish. I have known this man since my youth age. And when I accepted to work with him through the introduction of my mother, over the years that I have known this guy, he has proven to be faithful and very promising. He has never been absent or late. I'm just reading my recommendation letter. I don't know whether it concerns you. Neither does he disappoint people. He has never complained about any tax assigned him as he is capable of doing or multitasking as many assignments as possible. I'm talking about a man that I know. And I want to recommend him to you. Everywhere he went and everywhere he worked, he became supervisor because he is experienced to the extent even the supervisors and the experienced people call him the chief. Because he knows everything. So he is called omniscient. The all-knowing I read about this guy from a book and he said, remember the former things. Those of long ago, I am God. And there is no other. I am God. And there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning. From ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand. And I will do all that I please. I'm talking about a man. I have confidence in this guy. Because he has proven beyond every reasonable doubt that he is more than able to do beyond expectations. He is just a single man that can do more than what everyone can do together. That is why he is called El Shaddai. The God Almighty. I don't know what criteria you have set for your selection of employee that you are looking for. I don't know the criteria you have set for the selection of the doctor that you are looking for. 
I don't know the criteria that you have set for the school that you are looking for. I don't know the criteria that you have set for the husband, for the wife that you have set, uh, you are looking for. I don't know the type of person you are looking for or to hire. But I promise you, if you can give him a try, you will see for yourself. I don't want to say this because I know what I'm talking about. I just writing and reading my recommendation letter to you. Maybe you make sense out of it. I want to say that I came from a village that is not even on the map. I came through a family that is the least among the clan. I came from a clan that is the least among all the clans in the territory. That is where I came from. I came from a place where to see a car, at that time, it was difficult. They passed at certain time. And even before they read, they are failed. So uh, the order of the day was to just walk. That is the best means of transportation to move from one point to another. I'm trying to re recommend somebody to you this afternoon. Every black car that we ever saw was for evil people. So whenever we see any black car, you must run to the bush and hide. I'm trying to tell you where I came from. I'm talking about the place where seeing snake in your room at night or on your roof is just a common thing. I, I, I want to tell you something. I don't know if you are listening. Most of the common cars that you ever see were trailers that were hauling uh, timbers from the forest. Because they were the common one that you ever see. They go to the forest to, to haul the timbers. I, I don't know, you know what I'm talking about here. But snakes living with you was not fearful. Like some of us. If some of us will see snake here right now, I bet you this whole place will be turned upside down. <laughs> but I come from a place where we see them everywhere. Where sometimes we want to run after them to make sure we kill them. We sat in an open classrooms where the floors were not cemented. And when some rain is falling during school hours, we all have to run to the one or two rooms that were completed. Because when the rain is falling, it will be flashing all in the classroom, so nobody will be able to sit in the class. That is where I came from. We wore anything that we could lay hands on to where to go to school. I mean, shoes, whatever you think about, you can't even find it. And if you ever wear shoes, it means that your family was a well-to-do family. I'm talking about something that I know about and somebody that brought a change. We walk about four to five miles distance to go to school and back. A total of nine miles. And you will come back home and there is no food. And then they will tell you, say, when you come from school, meet them in the farm. That is the only place you can go and have lunch. Eating food without lunch, uh, without feed, sorry, was common. And sleeping in darkness is just the order of the day. Because many times and oftentimes you will not find even a kerosene to buy. I remember the first person that ever bought TV, the black and white TV. That person never enjoyed his privacy. Because let people get to know that 8 o'clock is this program. The windows everywhere, the doors, and it reached to the point he said, then I cannot make it. So he had to bring it on the street. So every evening, everybody had to pull to that one TV on the street. 
and the TV had a long pole. And then when the wind blows, you have to turn it and turn it and turn it before you get a signal again. That is what I'm talking about. The best game for the kids at night, when the moon came up, was to play hide and see in the bushes between the houses. But when I met this man, who was introduced to me, as I said, by my mother, I decided to give him a try. Though it took time, but he worked it out. At his own time and his own pace. This is where I am today. Until I met this man and began to trust his words, I never thought I can ever stand before people like you. I'm just making a recommendation about a man. This man was the same man that this woman met at the world. And if we could read a scripture from St. John chapter 4, if we can read a few verses, the Bible says that Jesus and his disciples were going and passing through Judea and they came to a city or a village called Sychar. And then they decided to go to the city to get food. But Jesus decided to stay at the way. Why he decided to stay, nobody knows. There came a woman to come and fetch water. And this woman Jesus began to have interaction with her. He began by saying, please give me water. And he said, what are you talking about? You are a Jew. You're dressing and everything shows that you are a foreigner. I cannot give you water because the Jew and the Samaritans cannot pull. To cut all the conversation short, he reached a point and Jesus said, okay, go and call it. Your husband. And she said, I don't have husband. Then Jesus said, you have said the right thing. Because you have been with five different men. And they are not all your husbands. And even the one that you are with, it's not yours. It means that you are cheating on somebody else. She was doing something different. And then she began to think and say, you are said right because you look like you are a prophet. Jesus was not just a prophet. He was a prophet of the prophets. And at the end of all the conversation and everything, the story went on to say that this woman realized that this man can do the job. And so she went into the city, ran into the city, and began to call all the people of the town, come and see a man. A man who has told me everything that I have done. I think this is the right choice. David called him many names because David knew what the Lord did for him. He encountered him, he proved him, and he knew that God was capable and is capable. This man I'm talking about, he never went to school, but he taught the doctrines in the temple. The religious leaders were asking and taking notes at the age of 12. He never went to school. This man I'm talking about, he never wrote a book. But this man, there is no man in history that more books have been written for him and by him. I'm trying to make a recommendation. If you can take this man in your company, if you can accept this man to work with you, I'm just making a recommendation. He never composed a song. 
but in the history of mankind, there is no man that have ever had songs written, composed for him and by him. There is nobody. This man, when he speaks, foundations are shaking. When he shakes, kingdoms are falling. I am still thinking what I should say to recommend this man. I sometimes think, what did he do that the sea cannot be quiet? I am still thinking about this man. He opens the doors of the winds, and when they come out, there's no technology that can stop it. I was thinking about this video. The snows were all around, and, and people just think that it's just a nature. It's somebody doing it. How does the snow form, and how does they fall, and how does all those things take place? You, you don't think about it. You, you just think that it's just your nature, and you accept it as it is. But somebody is behind the scene. This man gave the sun and the moon timetable, and they dare not to miss. The only time it brought changes when Joshua stood up, and that, that was God, he was on God's assignment, and, and then he went and entered into the heavens and communicated with God and said, no, until the sun stands still, we cannot win. And that's the only day that the sun and the moon were suspended for their timetable. He is a miracle working God. I'm talking about the man Jesus. He is the same yesterday, he is the same today, and he is the same forevermore. If you are an employer and you are looking for somebody to hire, I recommend this man. He is the best candidate. If you are an applicant and you are looking for an employer, I recommend this guy. He is the best employer. If you are looking to marry, I recommend this guy. He is the best husband and he is the best wife. He is the best client to the lawyers. And the best lawyer to the clients. I, I don't know. Maybe you're looking for the best doctor in your community. I recommend this guy to you. He is the best doctor that you can ever think about. Even the doctors depend on him. I don't know if you are looking for such a person. Maybe you are not looking for nobody, but you are crying. I still recommend this guy because he's the best comforter. We have started 2018. Many are the aspirations and, and, and the resolutions that we have. We want to achieve greater things. But if you want to succeed, choose this man. Because this is the only man who can make you to succeed. I don't know what is your problem and what is your needs. But if you can allow this man in your life, he is all that you need. A son right there wrote and said, if I have Jesus, I have everything. But if I lose Jesus, I lose everything. So sometimes what we need is not a new job. What you need is Christ. This, this year you have put a lot of stuff down. You need that. You need that. You want to accomplish that. But all those things will not go anywhere if you forget about Christ. So if you want to achieve greater things in life, I recommend Jesus. Many of us have heard about him, but only few know him. It is not just by coming to church, then you know him, no. And many people have known him, but only few people have experienced him. 
Because you know him, yes, but you don't trust him. And only those that we experience him are those who trust him. There are some of us who trust our doctors than Jesus. Let the doctor say this. We will not sleep. But when God says it, we don't believe it. I remember Peter was standing before the, 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 the Sahirin and then he began to say, you and God, who should we trust? Who should we obey? You, human being, or God? So sometimes the doctors will say it, but if that is not what God say, I take what God say. Doctors can say you will die, and God say you will not die. You will live and declare the goodness of God. And that you take the doctor's advice, and then you begin to go, because you say you have cancer, you begin to think about dying. You will not die. You will live in the name of Jesus. No man can declare and come to pass. He is the only person that says and come to pass. The other time they were saying that there are going to be, I don't know how many inches of snow, there are going to be all that. At the end of the day, nothing came down. <laughs> Nobody can decide for God. He does what you think he can do. We, we are doing our best. Yes, I agree. Technology is trying to tell us what is going to happen. But many times they fail. And this is the only man that can never fail. If he tell you you're going to get 12 inches, it's going to be 12 inches. If he tell you you're going to be 15, it's going to be 15. It's not going to be less. It's not going to be more. This is the only person. But many a times we turn our TVs and radios to listen to people, to listen to news, than to listen to what God says. So now we have listened to people until we don't listen to God anymore. And that's why even when you speak to us with that still small voice, we don't pay attention. I always tell people that many times, most of the things that will bring the success, breakthrough, miracles, of God, they are all foolishness. Most of the time, things that will bring miracle in your life, it sound foolish. I heard a testimony that sister was talking about, a bishop talking about opening your pocketbook and then gain. And some of us will look at bishop, bishop, you, do, you don't know how to get my bills to pay. And you want me to go extra. I decided to give five, but you want me to go extra. It, it, it sounds stupid, but there's one thing I know and realize, and I always talk about, and I always preach about, is that throughout the Bible, most of the miracles that people receive, they receive true foolishness. Oh, uh, let me just give you one example. Look at the widow who has a problem, and, and she ran to the prophet, and, and he said, prophet, you know, my husband was a prophet. He, he died with death. How can a prophet die with death? Because he didn't trust. He, he didn't do the right thing. You're not supposed to die with death as a prophet. And, and, and then the, the, the wife of Christ said, now they have come to take my children to go and sell them so that they will be able to upon them or whatever way to be able to pay the debt. And, and then he began to cry to the prophet. Look at what the prophet said. What did the prophet say to her? He said, what do you have? And, and, and she said, nothing. I don't have anything. The only thing I can remember having home is just a little oil. And listen to the stupidness the prophet said to this woman. He said, go and borrow drums, barrels, and then pour the little drum, uh, oil into them. Does that make sense? Because one thing I know is that if you pour that little bottle of oil into the bigger drum, you're not going to get the same oil back. <laughs> Let's put that aside. Let's put that aside. At the, at, the, uh, at the wedding at Cana, what did Jesus tell the people? To go and fetch water when they needed wine. They, 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 they didn't say we want water. They said we want wine. Come 
And then these people, because they too, they listen to what the mother said. That's one thing that I love. The mother said anything. She t- he tells you, do it. It may sound stupid. It may sound foolish. <laughs> but do it. So they too, they were just doing anything. He continued to tell them. And don't forget, in those days, we don't have the faucet right in the kitchen where you just open the water. They have to go to the river, right? Then after they have done all their best to fill the barrels, and then listen to the stupidness he told them. He said, go and serve the people. It was no wine. It was still water. They want wine. They didn't need water. They want wine. But then he still tell them, he said, go and serve the people. And, and then to they begin to fill the, the jars and whatsoever to go and begin to serve the people. They were doing it not because they were comfortable of doing it, but they were doing it because the mother said anything. So not until the people who needed the wine tasted it and know that it was wine, those that were drawing the water and all those things, they didn't know that it was wine. That's another foolishness, right? So if you want the blessings of God, the breakthrough of God, the miracles of God, most of the time, listen to the foolishness that comes from the altar. Because the Bible says, God turned the foolish things. I want to close, but I know this guy. And I want you to take him on your journey in 2018. Let this guy be with you. He can change the unchangeable. I trust him, not 80 to 90% as I recommended a lady, but I trust him 100 plus. If you can trust him with your life, you won't regret. I'm still reading my recommendation. I conclude by saying, I would have regretted if I didn't choose such a person to be my Lord and personal Savior. I recommend Jesus to all of you. If you have needs, I recommend you. Just take Jesus, and that is all you need. If you are here today, and you know that you need him, I want you to stand to your feet. Let us pray. You may not need him as your Lord and personal Savior. You have been saved, but over the years that you are saved, you are still the same. There is no improvement. You need him. Maybe you are here and you are sick. You don't need all those medications. The best medication that you need is the blood of Jesus. So sometimes we, we allow the, the human beings, the doctors, to put much fear in us. And then we walk all around with bag of medicine, drugs, and every five minutes we have to remember to take our drug. And we don't forget to take it, but we forget to pray. God is here tonight to deliver you. And if you believe, you'll be delivered. Bishop. God bless you. Amen. If you want to come forward as usual, you can come forward. And Bishop is going to anoint you. Other people are going to anoint you.